Hello, Grace Church. Thank you to all of you who've been praying for our church and for our city. This past week, uh, we experienced the largest peaceful protests in the history of the city of Providence on Friday, and uh, everyone was safe, and our church building is safe as well. Thanks be to God for both of those things. Um, a programming note I wanted to share with you today. First is that um, the current uh, uh, issues of racial justice are so, so much on our minds these days, and we are working on uh, a virtual program to share with you in the coming weeks um, about racial justice, and so there'll be more information coming to you in the near future about that. But right now I wanna share with you a programming note for Tuesdays, as you know, our beloved music director, Vince Edwards for the past two months or so has been offering views of grace about the, the physical fabric of Grace Church. Uh, you can <clears throat> watch back episodes of that through our website and uh, I've been learning um, much myself about Grace Church and I'm sure many of you have as well. Uh, and here today uh, we're going to offer a new series and that is about the literal fabric at Grace Church and that is the vestments that I and so many others wear during worship. And that's going to be presented by Charlie Carroll, who is a uh, crucifer and altar kill member of Grace Church and an historian at Brown by profession. And he's going to be sharing with you history of, of Christian liturgical vestments and the specific vestments that we have at Grace Church. So I hope you will enjoy it. I'm sure I will. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. God bless you all. Hello, Grace Church. My name is Charlie Carroll, for those that haven't met yet. I'm a member of the church here, and I'm also a member of the Altar Guild. You might also have seen me carrying the processional cross on some Sundays. By training, I'm a medieval historian, um, and so I thought it might be interesting to explore with you all the history and symbolism of the vestments here at Grace. I'm calling this video series, you might have heard of Know Thy Vestry. I'm calling this video series Know Thy Vestments. So Vince's video series, I think, um, uh, on the history and symbolism of our physical church, um, I think has given us a deeper sense of the meaning of the space that we inhabit. And I hope that we all get to return to the church in its physical sense. Um, this video series will also help us have a deeper, deeper experience of the liturgy. So over the next few weeks, I'll be looking at a number of um, different kinds of liturgical garments such as the stole, which I'll be talking about today, the chasuble, the owl, um, clerical streetwear, choir dress, and if you don't know these terms yet, you will, so please stick with me. So today we're looking at the stole, um, and you see a series of stoles laid out here across the table. Um, you'll see that they are all uh, different colors for the different liturgical seasons and purposes for which they're used. So here we have a series of red stoles, and red is worn for um, occasions such as Palm Sunday, Pentecost, and the feast days of martyred saints. And you might be able to make out that there are kind of different shades of red here. Um, so ox blood is the more purpley red, um, and this is worn on Palm Sunday, whereas the, the, the redder red um, is worn on Pentecost. And next we have white stoles. So white is worn for Christmas time, of course, uh, for um, Holy Thursday, for Easter, and on the feast days of saints who weren't martyred. Um, and also usually for funerals. Next we have green for ordinary time. And lastly, we have purple, which is worn during Lent, during Advent, and sometimes for funerals. So the stole is worn by both the priest and the deacon. Um, and so here we see a photo of Jonathan wearing a stole. 
and also a photo of a deacon wearing a stole. You can see how the deacon wears a stole over their shoulder rather than um, down on each side. And the fact that it's worn off to the side is meant to symbolize a servant's towel. So see that it's a band of colored cloth, which is usually made of silk, sometimes partially of silk, um, usually about seven and a half to nine feet long and about three to four inches wide. Um, the ends might be straight or they might be sort of broadened out, which you'll see in some of these folds. It's almost always decorated in some way, usually with a cross or some other kind of design, like a paschal lamb. It's often decorated, as many of these are, with some kind of ornamental trim. And fringe is usually applied to the end, as, as you see here, with the purple stole. Um, this is in connection with a passage from, from Numbers, where it says, Speak to the Israelites, and tell them to make fringes in the corners of their garments throughout the generations, and to put a blue cord on the fringe of each corner. You have the fringe so that when you see it, you will remember the all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and not follow the lust of your own heart and your own eyes. So one of the earliest mentions of the stole um, is from a fourth century church council held in modern day Turkey, where among the concerns were distinguishing bishops from ordinary priests and clergy from lay people and also regulating liturgical practices. So one of the rules that came out of the council says that only priests and deacons were allowed to wear the stole. So already here we can see that as early as the fourth century, the clerical hierarchy was being defined. And one of the indicators of one's rank within the church was what he was permitted to wear. The stole was being used to indicate the office of priest or deacon, and while it appears that it was used in the Eastern Mediterranean, it does not appear to have been used widely in Italy or Northwestern Europe until at least a few centuries later. So one of the historical trends I'll be discussing in relation to many of these clerical vestments is that most of them in some way evolved out of Roman civic attire. So these are things that ordinary people and sometimes people of the imperial court would wear. So rather than choosing to adapt ancient pagan religious attire, Early Christians chose to adapt the things that both ordinary and powerful Romans would wear and, and sort of make them work in a Christian context. So we know, for example, that the stole evolved out of Roman civic attire. We're not exactly sure what the predecessor of the stole within Roman culture was. One possible explanation is that the stole evolved out of the Tudarium, which was a kind of linen handkerchief or neckcloth used for wiping sweat off your face. It's often used in formal settings like dinner parties um, or, uh, or imperial court ceremonies. So here we see a, a rather famous sudarium. This is the sudarium of Oviedo, which is believed to have been wrapped around the head of Jesus after he died. We read of this in John chapter 20, verses 6 through 7, where Simon Peter enters the tomb and find Jesus wrapped in a cloth. This cloth in Latin is called a sudarium. Another possible explanation is that the stole evolved out of a scarf, which would, could, which would be worn by Roman imperial officials. So it's thought that as clergy became members of the Roman administration, as Christianity became gradually more accepted in the empire from the fourth century onward, they adopted the scarf, they meaning the clergy, as a way to indicate the role in the imperial and church hierarchy. So we hear about this in a similar way in the fourth century council um, in modern day Turkey that I talked about. It's a way of showing one's uh, clerical rank, one's ordination. And so early Christians adopted this into a sort of liturgical scarf. Um, as they were adopted, adapted for liturgical use, they were more commonly made of dyed silk instead of linen or other cheap materials. Since at least the 3rd century BCE, raw silk was imported from China, usually to port cities on the Eastern Mediterranean. In these cities, they would be dyed and made into um, what they would be woven into, into silk. So as the 
stole became more common as a part of the pre liturgical attire, and also a caught and acquired number of symbolic or theological meanings. It came to symbolize, most of all, the yoke of Christ. And here we see a man using a yoke to carry water. You can see how the yoke almost looks like the stole that you see. So the yoke could symbolize hard work, like the work of a priest ministry. Also, in this other image, you see a, another kind of yoke, that being borne by oxen, a pair of oxen. And the oxen here are bound together. And so the yoke could symbolize a kind of binding together, like the binding of a priest in a church. And in fact, when a priest is ordained in the Catholic Church, the bishop presents the stole, saying, Receive the yoke of the Lord, for his yoke is sweet and his burden light. So you can see the, the conjugation of work and labor there. So that's the stole. Um, thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll join me next week when we talk about the chasuble.